This is Pre-Calc 12, Chapter 1.5. We're going to look at modeling and solving problems with polynomial functions. Word problems generally require a good understanding of English, and it requires knowledge about a secondary subject, like physics, economics, chemistry, business, etc. You want to create a meaningful variable and look to the question for this. And since we are using polynomials, we only want one variable. Okay, so these words usually mean divide or multiply. Let's throw in another one, of. These words just mean multiply. These words mean equal. And these words usually mean add, more, and, plus, increase, sum, total, tally. And these words mean subtract. Less, decrease, reduce, take away, deduct, discount. And use a dictionary or thesaurus to help with interpreting some words. By no means is this a complete list. English is big and it has lots of words that mean the same thing. So you have to just use your judgment. Many word problems rely on physics. So here are some basic physics formulas. Distance equals one-half acceleration times time, initial velocity times time, plus initial position. Average velocity equals total distance divided by time. Time is equal to total distance divided by average speed. Here are some business formulas. Average cost equals total cost divided by number of units. Revenue equals number of units times cost per unit. Profit or loss equals revenue minus cost. Finally, look at the question to determine what the variable should be. This will ensure that you don't have to do any further calculations to get the answer. Let's do an example. A piece of cardboard is 28 by 21 centimeters and it's used to make a box with no lid. What height will maximize volume? What height will make the volume 750 centimeters cubed? It's best to draw a picture for any problem, no matter how simple, because uh, it'll get your variable straight. So we have a piece of cardboard, and we're making a box with no lid. So that means we need to cut off the corners. And when we fold it up, we get a box with no lid. So what will be our variable? Height is mentioned twice. So let's make this our variable, h. And when we fold up the box, this portion will be h. If we have 28, and we take off the H's, there's two H's, that's the width. And here we have 21 minus 2H, and that is the length. The volume is length times width times height. And our length is 21 minus 2H. Our width is 28 minus 2H. And let's use one of our three main math tools, which is substitution. So we have 21 minus 2h, 28 minus 2h, times h. Now we can use our graphing calculator. Just quickly, before we use our calculator, we need to figure out what the domain is. If we look at this statement, h can't be bigger than 11. 10 and a half to be exact, because if h is 11, 2 times 11 is 22, we have 21 minus 22, that would be negative 1. So that would be negative 1 length. That's something that we don't want. So our domain, h is less than 21 over 2. Okay, now we can proceed to use our graphing calculator. So we have 21 minus 2h, but there's no h, so we just use x. 28 
minus 2x and x. Now we need to set our window. We don't need to go below 0. We'll just enter negative 1 so we can see things. Our x max, again, we don't need to go more than 10 and a half. But uh, let's just go to 20 just to see what the function looks like. We'll set the scale to 2. And again, we don't need to go below 0, but we'll leave it at negative 6. Our max, we'll set it at 1,500. And we'll do roughly 10% of that, so 100. And graph. So we get something similar to that. So these are your settings to get that graph. Where's our maximum? Our maximum occurs here. And to get the maximum, you would do second calc and maximum is four. And our left bound, we could say two. You can enter numbers or you can scroll. So I'll scroll for the next one and hit enter and the guess just hit enter. Okay, so our maximum is 3.96. H equals 3.96, and our volume is 1040 centimeters cubed. So that answers the first question, what height will maximize volume? The question is, this is a maximum. Why is this not the maximum? We talked about it earlier, and it's because it gives us a negative value for the length. So that means it's not part of the domain. Okay, we need to solve the second problem. We want to find the height when the volume is 750. So we go back to y equals, and we enter 750, and graph. Okay, so we have two solutions, one here and one here. To find that solution, we go second calc, and we want to find the intersect, that's number five. First curve, hit enter, second curve, hit enter, and a guess, and hit enter. So we have one answer at x equals 1.75, and that corresponds with this one. And if you do it on your calculator for the other one, you get that. Okay, you got to be careful with box problems because there's different setups, depending on whether there's lids or no lids. Next problem. The school is raffling off an iPad worth $700. They know that it will sell 500 tickets if the price is $5. For each dollar they increase the price above $5, they will lose 10x squared tickets, where x is the dollar increase. So we want to find the dollar increase that will maximize the number of tickets sold and then find out how many tickets are going to be sold. Okay, so here's our variable P, price. So revenue is equal to price times number of tickets. First part is easy, we have a P. Now, we know that they're going to sell 500 tickets. if the price is $5. So here, we'll hold on to that. Now, the next part says, for each dollar they increase the price above $5, they will lose this many tickets. Remember, we're calculating the number of tickets. It's minus because we're losing tickets. So it's 10, x squared. Okay, so x is the dollar increase. And the dollar increase is p minus five squared. It's the price above $5. For every dollar, we're going to lose the squared times 10. So that's our formula. Let's enter this on the calculator. x 500 minus 10 bracket x minus 5 bracket bracket oops squared and then bracket. 
our window. Remember, X is our price. It's unlikely that we're going to increase our price much past $10, so we'll use that as a starting point. And our ticket sales. So 500 tickets at $5. So we need a minimum 2,500. So let's set our max to 5,000. And our Y scale will be 500. Again, 10% of the range. Graph. Okay, I'm gonna set the window to match the drawing and I did that for a reason. I'll set that to minus five, graph. So we wanna search for the maximum, second calc, and four, left bound, somewhere to the left of that peak and right bound somewhere to the right of the peak and hit enter for the guess. Okay, so our answer is 7.74 and that matches down here. Our dollar value is 32.88. This is price and this is revenue. Question, why is this not the maximum? Okay, so if we go back here and look at this X value, what does the X value mean? It's the price, negative price. It doesn't make sense, so we don't use it. It's not part of our domain. Okay, and last constraint, ticket prices must be in dollars. This is not an even dollar. Our next tool to use is second table. Let's scroll down because we're interested in the lower value. That's how you get the table. And it's this table here. This is our maximum. And it's $8. So this is a $3 increase. And we need to know how many tickets are sold. Number of tickets. equals revenue, total revenue, divided by price. So that's 32.80 divided by eight, and that gives us 410 tickets. Okay, last thing, definition of polynomial expression. Polynomial of degree n can be written in the standard form. The variable is ordered by the powers in decreasing order. And the a n and a n minus 1, a n minus 2, those are just the coefficients. The coefficients are integers. They have to be integers. n has to be a whole number. So that means positive. We can't have negative exponents. So let's look at some examples. Minus 5x to the 4 plus 2x squared plus 3. That is a polynomial expression. Again, this one is a polynomial expression. These are not polynomial expressions. 3 root x. This root is an exponent of a half. This, 4 over x squared plus 3x cubed. This is a negative exponent. So those are not polynomial expressions. And here, this is a polynomial expression, but it's not in standard form. We have to rewrite this as 4x cubed plus x plus 3. This one is minus 14x to the 4 minus 2x plus 7. And that completes this lesson.